So last night, I grabbed my camera and did a spot of astrophotography. The quadranted meteor shower was due to peak between last night and tonight. Across the UK, temperatures had dropped, but I managed to grab a few shots. This is a great time of year to capture one of the great sights of the winter sky, Orion. Orion is one of the most famous and recognizable constellations in the night sky and is visible from almost every part of the world. Named after Orion, a mighty hunter in Greek mythology, it's easy to see why, with a bit of imagination, you can see its stars form the figure of a man with a belt, a sword, and a raised weapon. The three bright stars in a row are Orion's belt, Alnitak, Alnilam, and Mintaka. Once you spotted them, it's easy to find the rest of Orion. Above the belt, you'll see Betelgeuse, a massive red supergiant that marks Orion's shoulder. Betelgeuse is one of the largest stars we know of and is nearing the end of its life, which means it could go supernova sometime in the next 100,000 years. Below the belt is Rigel, a brilliant blue-white star that represents Orion's foot. Orion's sword hangs just below the belt, and here's where things get really interesting. One of the stars in the sword isn't a star at all. It's the Orion Nebula, a vast region of gas and dust where new stars are being born. It's one of the brightest and most studied nebula in the sky, and you can even see it with the naked eye under dark skies. With the UK being in the Northern Hemisphere, Orion is a winter constellation, lighting up the night sky from late autumn to early spring. In the Southern Hemisphere, it appears in the summer months. Because of its brightness and the clarity of its stars, it's often the first constellation people learn to recognize. Of course, Betelgeuse to the top left of Orion is one of the most fascinating stars in our sky. It's a red supergiant star and marks the hunter's shoulder. As a red supergiant, it's nearing the end of its life, and it's absolutely massive. To give you an idea, Betelgeuse is about 1,000 times larger in diameter than our sun. If it replaced the sun at the center of our solar system, its surface would extend past Jupiter's orbit. It's easy to see its reddish color in the sky and to think that is because it is blazing hot. Actually, its surface temperature is relatively cool about 3,500 degrees Celsius, compared to the sun's 5,500 degrees Celsius. Cooler stars emit more red and orange light, giving Betelgeuse its warm glow. If you look to the opposite side of Orion, you see another bright star, Rigel. Rigel is the brightest star in the constellation, and it's located about 860 light years away, and it's a blue supergiant. Its intense luminosity comes from its massive size, Rigel is about 70 times larger in diameter than the Sun, and several times more massive. This star is a young giant, but it's burning through its fuel rapidly and nearing the end of its life. A Rigel's dazzling blue-white light makes it one of the most prominent stars in the night sky. Rigel isn't just one star, it's a triple star system. The main supergiant has two smaller companion stars orbiting it which can only be seen with a telescope. To the right of Orion last night, we had Jupiter burning brightly. Jupiter is a great view even with a small telescope. It's easy to make out its brightest moons and some of its many colors. And below Jupiter, another bright star, Aldebaran. This is one of the brightest stars in the night sky, located about 65 light years away, and is roughly 44 times the sun's diameter, and shines with a luminosity over 400 times greater. Looking further right, we see a small, almost fuzzy cluster of stars. These are the Pleiades, also called Seven Sisters. This is a stunning group of stars, are about 440 light years away. In total, there are over 100 stars in this cluster, though only six or seven are typically visible to the naked eye. These relatively young stars, just 100 million years old, and they shine brightly in shades of blue due to their high temperatures. They're surrounded by a faint, wispy reflection nebula, clouds of gas and dust that scatter the starlight, adding to their ethereal beauty. In mythology, they're often associated with the seven daughters of Atlas and Pleione, pursued by the hunter Orion. Their celestial dance across the sky has inspired stories, poetry, and navigation for millennia.
This final photo is a time lapse of star trails. Near the top, where the trails are smallest, is Polaris, or the North Star. The reason there is very little movement at this point is because Polaris is pretty well aligned with Earth's rotational axes. The further away you get from the North Star, the greater the star trails. As well as the unavoidable lights from passing planes, I did manage to catch one shooting star as it whizzed by. I also saw a few more that weren't captured on camera. If it's clear tonight, wrap up well and go out and see if you can spot any, or just enjoy the view.